Welcome to Sidebar. Our guest today is Erez Zobari, a fantastic R&B and soul musician. In 2019, she released her debut album, Eight Tracks, called July Clouds, and followed it up fantastically with Two Bloom that just came out. So welcome. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing well. It's so Great. good to be here. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to jump into it. We okay. Our first drink is a pure hard seltzer peach. Um, so that's the first one here. Love Cheers. That. Cheers. Thank you to Pure. <laughs> Immediately spit take. I mean, it's just like you start it, spit take. No, I actually, it. in elementary school, I had a lot of trouble because people were making me laugh and I would like spray on them. And the principal like called my parents. <laughs> That's true. It was like, she's spitting on the kids. I was like, I'm sorry. Anyway, my first question for you is, you know, your parents, big music fans, Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind & Fire, mm -hmm. Joni Mitchell, even some Israeli disco. How did their love for music kind of change your passion and your relationship with music growing up? I think they kind of just taught me like music is everywhere and like should be at every event and should be a part of your life in every way. And like, even at my house, there was always music in the background. We were always watching the Grammys. I actually remember my mom recorded the Grammys and we'd watch it for like months after on like a VHS tape. So I think it's just like, they kind of just taught me music is the event. It's not just like part of the event, but like it's the event. Right. And it made me love it. Yeah. No, music yeah. is great. Music this is the best. Is the best. It's the best. Uh, yeah. The second question I have for you is I saw that Jesse Reyes posted on like comments on your Instagram yeah. saying that she loves your voice and was sorry that she got yeah. to miss the concert. <laughs> yeah. I was curious if, you know, did you meet her somewhere? Did you ever play music with her? I met her um, at the Metro parking lot at Bathurst and Shepherd. Yeah, I know the one. And we were about to have a show. We saw her in Metro. I was freaking out. I was like, I'm not saying hi. It's so annoying. Like, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. But then my bandmate was kind of just like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go say hi. So while she was leaving in the parking lot, we went up to her and she was so nice. She's like, where is it? And it's actually supermarket is where she used to start. Like she started playing at the supermarket. Right. Um, so she was like, oh, it's great. I started there. I love it there. We invited her to the show. We knew she wouldn't come, but right. you know what? And a cool story, You got it instead, yeah. And, and it still was there, so that's pretty cool. For anyone who doesn't know, Jesse yeah. Reyes is a fantastic Juno-winning yeah. Canadian artist. So, she's really good. yeah, she's quite she's good. Really Check good. her out. Really good. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I also heard this story uh, that when your mom was living in California, she went on a date with Michael Jackson. Yes. Well, okay, so... It was actually in Ohio, okay, Cleveland, Ohio. And she was like 14 or 13. It's one of her Facebook profile pictures, but it's she basically ran into the Jackson 5 while they were playing tennis and she spent the whole day with them. And then her and Michael were, I think, around similar ages. So he invited her to the show, but her parents didn't let her go. So they bought her a record instead, which honestly, like I would resent my parents for yeah. the rest of my life. Yeah. And it's so funny because not only does she have the picture of her and Michael, but then she has like her, her other profile pictures are her with Michael impersonators in different cities. So it's just like, she really has committed to, you know, being the person who met Michael Jackson. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a good thing I'm a teacher. I'm, all of my high school like, kids are going to watch this and be like, she drinks. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're gonna go on to our second drink, which is just the classic hey y'all. It's just the hard iced tea, the classic flavor. Uh, so cheers. Cheers. We love iced tea. Mm. It's actually a different color than I thought it would be. I don't think I've ever drank it in a glass. I know. Like I thought it was a darker, like, you know, iced tea, like nest tea color. Yeah, I like it though. So now we're gonna do what we call backstage pass, where we yeah. went backstage on your social medias and kind of found some pictures that we want some explaining for. Okay. Oh God, I can't yeah. wait to see these. Yeah. Okay, so the first one was our final show at Queen's University. We were in fourth year and we we love to do theme shows because it was just like ridiculous. And I was like, who cares? Let's just do a theme show. In Kingston, you can like actually do whatever you want. I actually think Kingston gave me the ability to like try out this music thing because I think if I did undergrad in Toronto, I'd be like, oh my God, I need to like. Right. It's it's a definitely much more aggressive music. Scene. Yeah, it's like you have to be you have to be professional. Yeah. And Kingston, I was like, whatever. So I dressed up as a uh, an older woman, 
looking back, I'm like, oh my god, I hope I'm not like making fun of old people, but like I love my grandparents. So no, I yeah, love you, them. you look like the John Mulaney, you know, the play that they did dressed as old people. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, did Nick Kroll, John Mulaney. <laughs> Very fun. Okay, I'll watch it when I when I, I think get home. they're supposed to be old, like. <laughs> oh, hello. It's yeah. great. Well, I actually got inspired to do this photo shoot for the last show because my friends dressed up like this for Halloween, and they like went to the club with canes and like throwing candies <laughs> at people. I was like, that's so fun! Like for our last show of undergrad, everyone should dress up as old people. So it was supposed to be like a blast, actually, to the future. To be like, it's our reunion in like 60 years. Right. No one dressed up, but that's okay. No, you went hard. That's that's quite the makeup yeah. you've got. We went all over campus, to the library, to like Cogro. We just... Yeah. All right, let's... Uh, yeah. What about the second one? The second one, that was just before I was leaving for exchange. And I told my housemates to plan me a surprise party. And like, I gave them the date and everything. And then I went to um, Players, like Queen's Players which for those of you that don't know, you kind of just like drink pints of beer and watch people sing on the stage. I have no idea what actually happens at them. Um, so I forgot about the party because of the pints of beer and I showed up to my own surprise party that I planned. And that was the only surprise was the blue dress that they bought me from Value Village. Gotcha, Yeah. gotcha. And then the last photo, oh my God. The last photo we, so those are a bunch of my like childhood camp friends. And we had a night out and then we just saw these people um, advertising a new movie called like Girls Night Out or something. Sure. Like we all have underwear. Like they gave us so much. They gave us little headbands with like the penises on it. Right. They gave us like underwear. Like the bachelorette theme yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Like the sash, yeah. the underwear, the, the shot glass necklaces. And we like walked around the city for hours like that. Yeah. And like everyone came to talk to us. It was so fun. Yeah, I heard at one point you were like actually saying like you were getting married. Or yes, yes, I did. I told, yeah, married. I think I told everyone I was getting married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, we're going to move on to our third drink, uh, Lone Tree Cider. Uh, it's another one from Vancouver. These are actually all three drinks, I believe, from the West Coast. Oh, nice. Uh, and fun fact, uh, because air is actually gluten-free, we had to do all of our drinks as gluten-free, and that's why you see no beer here. Uh, I'm we're, sorry. It's, it's a beer-free zone today, beer free. but we were able to find all of these drinks with zero gluten. Zero gluten. Cheers. Zero shitting of the pants. It's very important. You almost got me another spit take there. Mmm, okay. this is good. So our next question would be, uh, would you rather, like when you write songs, do you write the whole thing kind of by yourself and then bring it to your band and say, here's what I've got? Or would you rather kind of write like an idea or just like a line of a song and then be like, hey band, like let's build this together. Hmm. I've done both things and it honestly depends like the content. If the content is like very personal and I'm like using music as a tool to like work through something internally, I'll probably want to sit down first. Like sometimes, especially during COVID, I'd write songs in like three minutes and I would just like bawl my ass out the whole time. And like you would hear me just like sobbing on the voice note, which I think made some of the band. <laughs> but like, yeah, in that case, I would come with a voice note of like a verse and maybe a chorus. And then I bring it to my bandmates who are David Lipson and Adam Eisen. That's like our little three pack collaboration yeah. squad. Um, and they kind of just have more instrumental ability to. <laughs> that was I so tried. subtle. I, I tried. <laughs> I hope the mic picked it up. It probably did. I, I was looking directly at it. For anyone who didn't hear or see that, I tried to conceal the burp. <laughs> <laughs> While making eye contact with me. While making direct, like, intense yeah. eye contact. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that was great. You. I love that. You never, which one was your favorite? Okay, you which kinda, one is my favorite? Okay, so. Depends, it depends. Mm, you, that was. I No, but I actually think my favorite, I'm, I'd am i much rather to collaborate on music than do it alone. Like I don't have the best attention span. So like if I'm with my collaborators, like, you know, when you're in a space, you're like, okay, I, I like owe it to the team. Like I got to be present. We're doing right. this. So I think I prefer in the studio with the three of us, like 
figuring out the instruments and the vibe. It also just helps because like Adam and David can play instruments better than I can. Right. So sometimes they'll play something and I'll be like, holy shit, that's incredible. Keep doing that. And right. then I'll get like this whole melody. Yeah. So I think collaborative is nice. the way to go. Okay. Yeah. And the next question is, uh, so I, I know you love reality TV. Uh, love. And, you know, I want to know what your favorite is. And you say that it actually influences your music when you run out of things to do. You So are there any songs or lines in songs that you've been like taken mm. from an event in reality TV? Well, it's interesting because I don't think I've like written about it, but I do think when you grow up watching reality TV, you're kind of like socialized to be outspoken and like really say what's on your mind and not shy away from like ridiculous, difficult conversations. Sometimes like healthy, sometimes it's like not healthy. But I think it's just like inform the way sometimes that I communicate or that I expect and hope people will communicate with me. Right. Just like no, no holding back. Like you can just say whatever, do whatever. And it's like, you know, we're all just like figuring it out. We're all human. I watch so much reality TV. And honestly, it's mostly in the background. So it's not even like I'm sitting with my computer, like watching hours of it. Absorbing it. It's just like in the background doing dishes. Like so I honestly will have TV on while I work for like seven hours a day. So just that, in the it background. goes along with your attention span of you yeah, know. I think it just helps me. I'm like, oh yeah, someone's here. Yeah. But like, oh, I watch it all. Like yeah. Jersey Shore, I'm up to date on every season. Is that still coming key. out? Is still coming Shore? out. Yeah, That's Jersey impressive. Shore Vacation. They've always the Jersey Shore yeah. in space. Yeah, Jersey, Jersey Shore, Shore on deck. In, at sea, yeah, exactly. I've watched it all. It's just so good. Like, it's crazy. I also think it teaches you what not to do. Because <laughs> like, you know, you can watch it and be like, oh my God, that's insane. If anyone complains about the life lessons of reality TV, just say, no, no, no. It shows you the opposite of what to do. It's a, a disclaimer. Yeah. Whatever they do in this show, do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, it's mostly that. Gotcha. All right. So well, now we'd like to take a moment and uh, we're going to have a word from our sponsors. But thank you so much. Are you ever nervous about walking up the stairs at night and missing that last step and stumbling up? dropping all of your food on you, all of your drinks. We've got you covered. We will insert an extra stair onto your staircase so you will never miss that last step. Call us, we're available. I know you've heard of Extra Stair, but have you heard of Extra Stair Plus? We will insert a special marble step on the bottom of your stairs so you will never stumble down. We've got you covered. Call us, available 24 seven, Extra Stair Plus. And welcome back to the show. Thank you for the word from our sponsors. We're going to move on to Murphy's Law, Warheads. We went with the green apple this time. Uh, so it's a 20%, uh, but we're still going to do it as a shot. So cheers down. Cheers. Sour. It's just so sour. Mm. I think that's the Warheads. Like you can feel it in your mouth. This one's so much more sour. <laughs> This one's so much more sour than the last one. This is... I love it. Yeah. No, that's... That's a whole body experience. That's delicious. I feel like if I were to have shots, I'd want it to be of... Yeah. It tastes like candy. Yeah. Okay, well... I love that. Now that you're feeling it, we're going to go into something like we call the, the lightning round. Okay. And again, we're going to have a bunch of lightning coming in for everywhere. Okay, lightning, lightning. Lightning, lightning, lightning. Okay. So I'm going to ask you super quick questions. Just say whatever comes to your head. Okay. As fast as you can. Okay. Okay. So, what concert would you want to see artist dead or alive? Okay. First thing that comes to your head. Oh my god, I can't even think. Okay, I'm th I'm sorry, my mouth is on fire. <laughs> like my throat, everything is so sour. Okay. First concert. First concert. Dead or alive. Maybe Elvis Presley. Elvis no, Presley. No, honestly, no. I have no interest. The Beatles. Okay. That's like a. You know Owen Wilson in Zoolander? He's like, I think my biggest influence is Sting. I don't listen to his music, yeah, but like, I know. I know. I was like, Wait, I just appreciate that? that he puts it out there. Yeah. It's such a good line. <laughs> What's bark on a tree made out of? Sting. Sting would be another person who's a hero. The music that he's created over the years, I don't really listen to it, but the fact that he's making it, I respect that. That Hansel's so hot right now. 
What's the favorite venue you've ever played? Um, supermarket. Supermarket. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite concert you've ever been to? Favorite concert? Cheetah Girls. <laughs> That's my first concert. First concert ever. It was so cute. I or you know, know what? Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana. Oh. No, but like I'm thinking childhood right now. Like there's something about the Warheads has gotten me really nostalgic. It's the apple juice and then the yeah, Warheads, yeah. you know, back as a child. Yeah, because that's really, like, that's my childhood shit, but, like, actually in adulthood, probably not. Okay. Probably Stevie Wonder with my parents and my aunt. Yeah, that would be an amazing show. Yeah. What's your favorite TV show intro song? TV show intro song. Something like, you know, Office is, you know, How Many Rather Like the ba 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 The issue is I don't watch TV shows other than reality TV. So then is there a reality TV show that has some, I don't watch much reality TV, you know but is what? there, like, a really you know sick what? intro song that you like? <laughs> Temptation Island. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like you're not gonna tell me. It's great. <laughs> We're definitely gonna play that. It's over so it. ridiculous. And all of our friends go, whoa. That's yeah, great. <laughs> it's really good. You're not gonna tell me. Uh what band or artist or song is your guilty pleasure that like people make fun of you for but you love anyway? Mm, you know who I thought of? Aqua. You know Aqua, that band I from our childhood? I think they sang um, Dr. Jones. Oh! So, and then they have another song. Call like, me Dr. Jones. Yeah, Tarzan and, and Jane. Like, they're just insane. Dr. Jones, Jones, What is the weirdest cover you've ever played? The weirdest cover song we've ever played? The weirdest cover we've ever played was probably at Queens when we did like a three and a half hour Christmas and Hanukkah performance. Like I actually think we played the most obscure holiday music that nobody even knew about. I will say I did see on, it might've been that show, you once covered My Neck. I did? Yes, as, as part of a song, at least it was part of it. I think it was at that venue. Uh, it seemed Christmas themed, but you did cover Whoa. My Neck. which. I would thought it was going to be your answer, but now that you didn't bring it up, I was like, she has covered that song. I before. didn't even know I covered we'll that. We'll bring up the footage. Ready? Do you really have footage? Yeah, I, I got I got lots of. I'll, you have footage I'll, of that? I'll, I'll try to like find my that. neck. Yeah. My back. Yeah, that song. <laughs> See, that's what I'll I mean by like. Afterwards. In Kingston, you can get away with anything. You can really do what you want. Yeah, there's yeah. less people being like, "That's you're Wrong. not being whatever." Yeah. And the last question is, what is your favorite musical? My favorite musical is Rent, but also Wicked. Like I can't choose, uh, you, you know, Rent. Rent. I actually printed out all the lyrics in grade four, and I put it in a notebook, and I would bring it to recess every day. And read it. And we'd sing it. Right. So I feel like that classifies as a favorite. Yeah. Once you're rent. at that level, it's rent. It's, it's rent. rent. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to move on to our final drink. Okay. Moon Dance Clear Corn Spirit. Clear uh, corn. Yeah. I looked it up. Corn is not gluten. Is it embarrassing? Ooh, is it embarrassing that I had to look up if corn was gluten? No. I feel like I never know with things. Yeah, corn's a weird one. I was going to bring down a bunch of snacks for us to have if we wanted them. And I was like, I'll just bring chips. You know? I'll just bring crackers. You know? I'll, you know oh, what? chips are. Chips, I feel like, have gluten. No. Potatoes don't have gluten in them? No. I know nothing about gluten. I don't know what gluten is. And at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. Let's get into our last set of questions all about this new album that you're putting out. Let's do it. Uh, you kind of created this album and, and recorded it during the pandemic. So, you know, were there any kind of funny stories or frustrations kind of sending things online and working online with that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely expected to release it earlier. I think the pandemic kind of, you know, set everyone's schedules back a little bit. But definitely getting used to recording in my room, like a lot of the fall winter was like figuring out a mic situation and like, bringing the kitchen table into my like small condo bedroom and like 
miking up and it sounding so bad and David being like, put a blanket over your head. And I was like, I'm not putting a blanket over my head. That's crazy. Um, Did you ever so put a blanket one, over your head like ever during this time? I put a blanket on the door. That was kind of like the, you draw yeah. the line in the sand. I was like, I'm not putting, like imagine singing with a blanket over your head, like into a mic. Like I, I've never done it. It just sounds like I don't want to do it. I also don't think I would sound good singing yeah. ever. So I don't Very think the good. blanket would, you know, be the redeeming factor. But maybe yeah. I get under the blanket and mm. I just sound incredible. I sound like Aretha Franklin under the blanket. Maybe. Maybe. I'll have to test it out. Yeah, I'll have to test it out. Tonight, I'm going to be under my bed. <laughs> the blanket. <laughs> Looking like a dementor. You should. You should All try right. it out. Let me know. Let me know. Yeah, what you I, think. Will. I will. Because maybe I'll try it. And the last question I have for you <laughs> is. You know, I know this album just came out, but I always love the artist's perspective on some of the songs. Do you have any insights, some deep dives into the songs of the album? You were like, I want to share this. The album is like my unique interpretation of what it feels like to graduate university and move to a city and be like, what is happening? And like trying to excel at your job and trying to have a social life and trying to date and trying to make money and like be self-sufficient. I think it's just like, for me, it just felt like, oh my God, this is my like transitioning album. Like it's like figuring out my sexuality, figuring out what I want to do, figuring out who I want to be, who I want to be with, who are the friends I want. Um, and I think like there's moments of like triumph, like, yes, I figured it out. Like I feel strong, I feel good. But then there's also moments of like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like you're so lost and confused. And I, it's not even like, I feel like I've like figured it all out. Like it's all good. I think, I mean, I imagine all of us will like kind of be on this like roller coaster of figuring it out. Um, I just made such like weird choices, especially in terms of dating. Like I feel like when you're in a big city and you're single and you're like trying to make meaningful connections, it's actually like harder than you think. So a lot of it is about trying to find partners in people that are kind of just filling voids. Right. It's kind of yeah. like the, it's, I heard the outro, you know, yeah. on, on the first part yeah. where you kind of had that. It's the only time it's kind of just you talking, yeah. but saying like, if I'm with someone who I shouldn't be with, tell me right away. So I guess yeah. that's. Yeah. Just tell of. me. And I, I mean, like, I think it's so funny to be like 24 25 dating people because it's like it's not necessarily the people you'll marry but it's definitely like not a high school relationship right. so it's like i often think about like what is the responsibility as a young adult to like date responsibly but also help your friends date responsibly and like what do you do if like your friends are in a really weird situation i've heard of drink responsibly this is the first time i ever heard date responsibly kids date responsibly <laughs> Yeah. Or, or don't. <laughs> or don't. Yeah. And just like figure it out. Yeah. I didn't date responsibly. And I think the album is about that. Right. I think I'm dating responsibly now, but it's Based like. Based on your yeah, learning yeah, experiences. Yeah. You know the red flag. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, it's It's been a lot of fun. And yeah, do you want to promote anything you got going? Anything you sure. got coming? Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you for watching the video. Um, love talking about life and music. You can stream to Bloom on all streaming platforms um, and follow us on social media to get updates on the music that's coming out and what we're up to and yeah. the upcoming shows. She is a great social media page. So I, I highly recommend to follow, a like, a subscribe, all subscribe. of those things. Yes. But then also hit us up with one as well. <laughs> yeah. On your way, on your journey <laughs> through the good content. Yeah, we'll, we'll piggyback on that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Yeah, thanks so much. This is our title track to Bloom. I hope you enjoy. You can stream it everywhere now. You're not as fascinating as I thought you were. Like our only photo, it is all a blur. Try to read your mind, but no, it didn't work. A game of conquer and give, but you only took. I'm pushing forward and I'm letting go. 
Just 24, but I'm still learning to grow. Oh, I'm stuck in this daydream. Cause I'm through with waiting. I've been in pain and I know there'll be more. I've been in the rain and I'm one with the storm. Whoa, I'm rooted enough now to bloom on my own. There's a reason for all the tears I've cried and the mess I made. Help me realize that I'm tied to myself for the rest of my life. So I learned to love me. complicated as you made me seem if you stopped and listened maybe then you'd see I was moving through these insecurities the letter that I gave you should have been for me I'm pushing forward and I'm letting go just 24, but I'm still learning to grow. Oh, not stuck in this daydream. Cause I'm through with waiting. I've been in pain and I know there'll be more. I've been in the rain and I'm one with the storm. Oh, I'm rooted enough. I'm gonna bloom with or without you. All the tears I've cried and the mess I made. Stronger. Yeah, I'm coming out stronger.